guys, sorry I'm a little late. I am Island Turtle, welcome to Balmy Spirit. This is gonna be the weekly intuitive astrology reading uh, for April 22nd to April 28th. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, before we get started, for anybody who's new, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I appreciate it, it really does help the channel. It also helps anybody who needs to hear these messages, so think of it that way too. Um, so for those who are new and don't really know how this works, I'm going to go over the astrology of the week. I'm going to give you my two cents on it and also just what I've been intuiting with this energy as a channel. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and pull some cards as well for elementals. I might skip the collective read just for the sake of time. Today's a little bit of a crazy day. Um, <laughs> hello guys. Hello, hello, hello. Um, also bear with me. My asthma is in full swing. <laughs> Any of my patrons who watched the uh, sign readings that I put up yesterday on Patreon already know. But yeah, there's gonna, I, I'm just telling you right now, there's gonna be moments where I gotta like stop, blow my nose, drink some water, maybe even use my inhaler. I took quite a few hits before I went live on my inhaler to try to counteract that. <clears throat> but yeah, it's just, it's just what's going on right now. <clears throat> Sniffle season is coming to get us. Yeah, it's bad this year. Like, in the beginning of the season, I wasn't really getting hit with it, but I've been outside a lot um, just because of I've been doing some ceremonial training and it's required me to be outside a lot. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it's um, it's whooping my ass. I'm not gonna lie. It's totally whoop. Oh yeah, Clyde, there's the Clydester. Um, like this is really bad. Like I I took some like, Allegra D today. <laughs> <coughs> Um, like the 24 hour kind, the like most intense kind you can get like in a drugstore, even going to the pharmacist. And this is, this is the best I could get off of it. I'm still congested. Um, and like I said, my asthma is also really kicked up too. I've used my inhaler a lot in the last couple of days. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Just got done playing with my cat. Perfect timing. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, I take Flonase too. I take Flonase every day. I only take Allegra D with the Flonase when it's re when it's really, really bad. So this is me on multiple allergy medications. I'm just, I my allergies are just really, really bad. Believe me, guys, I've been through it all with me. I've tried every <clears throat> allergy medication on the market you can possibly think of. I've tried it. Um, but yeah, the only thing that helps me at all, really, like truly, when I get really like, when it all kicks up is Allegra D, which is basically like speed or meth or whatever. <laughs> <coughs> but we're going to flow with this, okay? Um, also, for anybody who is curious about the videos that I do for the Full Moon and New Moon Lives, um, I did it already on Patreon and it is there and I'm also uploading it to Vimeo as we speak. So by the time this posts and you want to go and check out the deep dive on the Full Moon Scorpio, it will be on uh, Vimeo as well, okay? Oh, let's see the comments here. I understand, I live Allergy Valley. <laughs> I take Allergy also and I've noticed a 12 hour works better for me. For, for me, I've noticed a 12 hour like only gives me a couple hours of relief. <clears throat> the 24 hour gives me about like maybe a good solid six eight hours of relief which is why I took it because I knew I was going live today too and I wanted it to be like not as bad <laughs> um yeah so I've heard the local honey thing I honestly don't feel it helps that much because I've been I've been trying that method for years where I've, wherever I've been living and it doesn't seem to help me that much um uh, but yeah so anyway Enough about allergy talk. Uh, let's go ahead and get into this. I'm gonna already prep my timestamps, actually. Let's see, synopsis. <clears throat> oh, man. Oh, yeah, this year's bad. This year's probably the worst year so far. And I was like, I was feeling so good, I was. I was like, oh, it's not affecting me, I'm gonna be okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <coughs> okay, so before we get into the astrology, I just want to give you guys my little synopsis and overview of what to expect this week. So we do have the full moon in Scorpio on the 23rd, at least here in the States at around, I think it's like 7.50 p.m. <coughs> East Coast time. Adjust that for wherever you are, obviously. We do finally have Mercury going stationary direct. 
I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. This Mercury retrograde's also been whooping my ass. Um, but that's going direct on the 25th of April, I believe. Uh, so as far as the energies this week, the full in Scorpio has really like, uh, I love the energy behind this woman Scorpio. And I don't just say that as a Scorpio, <clears throat> but when we sat in the live together, it was really nice because, excuse me, we didn't actually focus on the astrology right away, which is what I felt guided to do. It's like, it's fun going over the astrology. And, you know, for some of us, we feel it's important to go over the astrology, but there's also just more important things going on. <laughs> you know, like energetically and even just in life in general that we all are going through and like need to talk about and deal with. <clears throat> but that actually falls in line with the energy of this full moon and the energy of this week. This full moon Scorpio is like really digging things up from the depths. That's just what full moon Scorpio cycles do. And Pluto is a factor in that. The full moon is square Pluto. So that scorpionic energy is definitely going to be a little amplified. And I know people get a little nervous about Scorpio energy. Don't get scared about it. Like this is something else I talked about on Patreon. Scorpio, eighth house energy, all it really is, is the cosmic womb. That's what it is. That's what it is. And I know we've already learned those lessons of like light versus dark or being in the light or being in the shadow, right? <clears throat> but you could even say this about Pisces, actually, now that I just said that. You could say this about like... Cancer too? No, I'm not going to say Cancer. Like 8th house, 12th house energies can bring about the access, the availability to get into that cosmic womb space. The underworld is just the cosmic womb. It's just one and the same. It's just a different lens of looking at it. You know what I mean? It's being able to sit in the void and sit within yourself, sit in silence, sit in the dark, in the shadow, <clears throat> and sit there because that is where we are truly in truth right? <clears throat> but it's not easy for some of us to do that. It's not easy. I would say for most people, it's hard to, to sit there, but that is kind of the beauty of 8th house, 12th house, Scorpio, Pisces energy. And we do have a lot of Pisces too, actually. Um, so don't be scared of Scorpio. Don't be scared of the 8th house. Don't be scared of Scorpio. Even though <clears throat> this is going to feel like for some of us, not for all of us, but for some of us, it's going to feel like another deep cleaning and i know that you guys i know we all probably feel like we've been doing that enough but that's also what life is life is constant ebb and flow life is constant change nothing is truly permanent or stationary in life and even if we feel like we're in hangman mode or whatever <clears throat> that just means that change is a coming too right you see what i'm saying um sorry i went on a whole little rant there that i didn't mean to <laughs> just realize <laughs> <clears throat> oh, excuse me. But what's cool about this scorpionic energy that we have, it's bringing up very deeply buried things. And it doesn't have to be bad things either. It's like deeply buried dreams, deeply buried desires, wants, uh, deeply buried uh, sense of purpose, even for some of us. Um, of course, it also comes with like deeply buried secrets and truth and emotions and trauma and anger and repressed things like that's also coming to light too and pluto being an aquarius is actually really huge this week with all the astrology we have at play so just know that yes things are going to be like really out in the light from the dark so to speak but it is helping us it's helping us it's absolutely helping us and the biggest themes i was getting definitely relationships and obviously we'll go over that but the other theme i was getting too was how we have fun and how we play and how we create and even with a sense of intention um or even just things that make us feel excited and passionate to dive into as well so <clears throat> i'm exhausted from doing this all day um so as pluto digs things up for you and with four people around you, just know that it's really just aiding you into, into getting into more authentic ways of playing and creating and having fun and enjoying life and living life and all that it has to, and has to offer, including relationships as well. I was curious, I was debating on what to label this week, um, but I kind of, so what I kind of decided on was this is the week for perspective. This is totally a week of gaining perspective okay perspective on your buried shit perspective on yourself and your own triggers um perspective on 
how you're living your life, why you're living your life in the way that you are, what and who you value, what and who you love. And there's also this theme of sanctuary too that I thought was interesting that came up in Patreon and it was coming up again here too as I was doing my notes for the week. <clears throat> but when we can get to this much, much deeper, right, place of just truth, that like scorpionic energy, right? <laughs> We can have this stronger discernment of who and what we value and love, which in turn actually helps us to discern what we deem sacred. What is sacred to us? Who is sacred to us? What also is a haven or a safe space or a sanctuary for us as well? And I think that's really important too for just, you know, where everybody's at in the collective, or at least the collective energy is how I should say that. Um, I forgot the timestamp for the synopsis. Damn it. Oh, well, maybe some. Oh, you know what? I think it was 444. I just got a flash in my brain. So I think it was 444. I'm just going to guess and say that that's what it was. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's what you can expect this week. Um, now, I will say there is a lot of aspects at play. There is a lot of sign energies at play. And of course, the Fulman Scorpio is really emphasizing the scorpionic part of this as well. Um, I, I do think that fixed signs. Oh, man, it's it's kind of across the board, though between fixed, cardinal, and mutable. But fixed signs, I think you're definitely gonna feel the intensity of this week because we do have the full moon in Scorpio and a fixed sign, but we also have Aquarius and Taurus, very, very active as well. But as you know, even though we are now officially in Taurus season, happy birthday, Taurus is in tropic, obviously. Um, Aries is still really important too, and it's still doing what it's been doing. Um, but Cappy and Cancer are also part of that too. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's kind of across the board as far as like, fixed and cardinal mutable. I would say fixed and cardinals, fixed first, cardinal second, and then mutables third as far as feeling the intensity of things this week, okay? Um, and before I get into the astrology as well, if you want more of a simple, <laughs> simple, what is simple? Simple way of looking at your charts to see how you should be navigating these energies or how you could, how you could navigate these energies. I would say, I would also say look at your whole house of Aries. It's really the latter half, like 15 to 29 degrees. Aries is pretty lit up, but I would look at the whole house, especially if you already work on whole house systems. Um, Taurus, man. Taurus is like the beginning and end of Taurus is really active. So I would look at the whole house of Taurus as well. And don't forget Scorpio, just because that is where we are having the full moon. And that's where we're going to be gaining some clarity this week some major shattering of illusions happening in the house of Scorpio because of the full moon, zero to five degrees is what I would say. So just keep an eye on that. But if you are going to look at your house of Aries, I feel like that's more like the stage and context for where things will be playing out. So what I mean by that is if like, for example, if you, if you're a cancer rising like me, um, that is actually affecting my 10th house pretty strongly. Obviously, it's going to be different depending on like what if you're late degree cancer rising or early. I'm more early degree cancer rising. <clears throat> and I have like two intercepted houses. Anyway, doesn't matter. But for example, so that's my 10th house. And so 10th house, it's like literally all of this, right? Like that's my work. That's how people see me in the world. It also kind of touches on reputation. People say 11th house is reputation, but Na neighboring signs always have neighboring signs and houses always have a connection I feel like i'm in teacher mode right now <laughs> I feel like i'm just like oh information um so there's gonna be probably a lot of just changes and activity and events and some tough moments maybe some really good moments or all relating to this energy that's going to be happening for me in my 10th house, in my work, and how people view me, and how people see me, and also what I'm doing just legacy-wise down the line. Um, <clears throat> but Taurus, Taurus and Aquarius are kind of interesting here. Um, I would definitely look at Aquarius, like definitely make that a priority because that is where Pluto is at. Pluto is at two degrees Aquarius, and Pluto is very active in driving a lot of these energies. So Taurus and Aquarius is, I was just feeling it's the push, it feels more like push, 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 like driving forces for some of these changes and reveals and things that might play out in the stage of Aries. Hope you guys are with me here. <clears throat> so don't ignore Aquarius two degrees. Do not ignore that. Do not ignore it. Um, just look at it in terms of whatever house that's in. 
that's going to be a driving force to what will be playing out. So again, using my own chart as an example, Pluto's in my eighth house right now. She's like so oh, uber scorpionic. Um, and Taurus is my 11th house. So I'm having these like pressures and uh, I almost want to say like shifts more of like perspectives um, and maybe even shattering of belief systems because that's also what Taurus is doing. I'm going to get into all this, I swear. Um, so but my 11th house and my 8th house are pushing changes in my 10th house. So thinking of it like that. Um, and we do have some support as well from Sag and Pisces. Again, you don't have to get super into this. It's just like, this is how, how I do astrology and like how I would just like, if I were to give you a manual, this is the manual. <clears throat> Sag is actually going to be a surprising help because it is playing off of Pluto in a very supportive way. And again, I will get into it. You don't have to look at it. Just know that there might be some interesting surprises that go on in the house of Sagittarius in early degrees that could literally be a helping hand to navigating some of the stuff that Pluto is digging up and putting pressure on to come out within your house of Aries. And then there's your house of Sag giving you some like helpful resolutions and how to balance some certain things. Okay. And Pisces is going to be kind of fun actually. Oh, excuse me. Um, oh my God. Uh, Pisces is going to be very motivating, actually. Pisces, I was getting go for it, go for it, go for it. So the house of Pisces is what you're probably going to want to frolic it a little bit. And it is a neighbor to Aries, obviously. Um, so for me, that's my ninth house. Uh, so probably just prioritizing sub, sub play and passion and gearing that towards an outlet within my ninth house, like traveling or learning, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so that's my little synopsis on how to navigate this week. But that being said, let's actually get into some of the astrology now, now that we're 17 minutes in. Okay. Oh, hold on, guys. Oh, I want to be put in a bubble. I want to be bubble boy right now. Mm. And every time I go outside, I'm just like, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm a little scared. <clears throat> oh, okay. Let's get into it. So first, I want to go over some more long-term energies that we've been dealing with that are still present. So you probably have heard me talk about them already, and you're probably aware of them yourselves. Um, and then we'll get into more of the energy that's like really just occurring mostly this week and next week. Oh, next week. Mm. Yeah, the energy that we start to feel and embody and go through this week will intensify and follow us next week. And that, we'll, we'll get into it, we'll get into it, we'll get into it. Okay, <clears throat> so let's talk about Aries, because we must. So Mercury, it, like I said, is going stationary direct this week, thank God. In Aries, uh, about 16 degrees, it stays there all week and is working with the North Node in Aries still, and is still working with Chiron. After Mercury goes stationary direct and then it starts to move through Aries again, uh, it's going to work with Chiron yet again for the third and final time. It's going to peak out, and I can't remember the date off the top of my head. It is on the astrology calendar that I made, which is also linked below if you guys are still interested, along with the moon calendar as well, is still there, made by Ashley Jagmohan, by the way. Um, but it is going to happen in May, I believe. I believe that next day when Mercury goes exact conjunct Chiron is in May. So mid-May, <sighs> mid-May is going to feel good. Mid-May is going to feel good. I mean, I think there's also this energy right now, too, that we've all been feeling of, like, delay of delay or feeling like we can't quite get to where we want. We can't quite make what happen, what we want to happen, but we know it should happen. You know, definitely a lot of like hangman energy going around. Um, this is very strong in the full moon uh, Scorpio live. But anyway, by mid-May, the things that you've been feeling like you haven't been able to do, you're going to be able to do. And the energy is going to start kicking in actually at the end of this week, but it's going to amp up and it's going to get stronger. It's going to gain momentum as we get into May and then especially into mid-May. Uh, so something to look forward to there. <laughs> uh, yeah, something to look forward to there. So if you've been feeling that way and you've been frustrated or feeling maybe a little doubtful or down, it's just what's happening right now. That's also part of the lessons of this week is when do we force? When do we not force? When do we say, 
okay, we, we were pushing too hard. We need to kind of take a step back. Some things do have to happen in a natural timing. Even if you're putting energy into it, like put energy into the things that you care about, put energy into the things you want to invest in, but also know that just because something's not happening the way you want or expect, or that it's not happening right now, like doesn't mean you got to keep forcing it right? It might come to pass later. It might be a better flow later, or maybe it's actually something that's not even for you. That's going to be kind of a, a little bit of a rough one this week for some people is coming into the discerning awareness that, oh, this is actually really not for me and I need to let it go. Some of us, it really is just about giving things time. And again, natural timing to things. So whatever boat you're in, in terms of things that you've been struggling with and gaining momentum on or just deepening or investing in, et cetera, you're going to have to discern what boat you're in there. Okay. Anyway, I'm getting really, really into tangents today. <laughs> anyway, so we have all this Aries conjunction between Mercury, North Node, and Chiron. And this conjunction, these conjunctions are still square Ceres and Capricorn, uh, the white rabbit asteroid in Cancer, and also sextile Chericlo. So again, we've been in this energy for quite a bit. Um, the full moon Scorpio is definitely amplifying the effects of that Aries energy. Like this week is very Mars Pluto, if you want to think of it that way, but particularly the full moon is more Mars Pluto, but amplifying the deep releasing, deep shedding, deep cleansing, all of that stuff we've been going through for months, we are eclipsing it out right now. The full moon Scorpio just feels like kind of a quick little amplification of it. There is a lot of future thinking here going on, but again, if you are really trying to push the future or push new relationships or push new skills, whatever, be mindful of how much you're pushing versus how much you need to just take a step back and just let things be and fall into alignment in natural order. Again, May is gonna be a lot of momentum after this, okay? Um, how we share and communicate is also shifting dramatically, which is also helping us to discern and come into the awareness of what we actually value especially in terms of like play, like play is so important. <laughs> play is so important. Play, passion, and creativity. Any creatives out here or anybody who like you've been marinating on like big projects, um, where there is a creative flair or even where you just have a lot of passion for, especially if it's like to help people or to get involved in like politics and causes or nonprofits, we're moving into some really, really great weeks for you guys, for those of you guys who are in that boat and resonate with that. Um, there is still the struggle with balancing work and home though. That's still posing a challenge with the square to series and square to the white rabbit asteroid. And if any of you have come into new friendships or relationships in the last, I'm gonna say two months, I'm gonna say two months. In the last two months or so, there probably has been some weird energy there, okay? Um, there might still be weird energy this week. That weird energy might get amplified because Pluto's bringing, right, true feelings and things to the surface, but it will work out the way it's supposed to with whoever these individuals are. There's definitely some musical chairs going on with relationship stuff, but again, we're giving, we're getting into it, okay? So that's really the first cluster of air, um, energy wanting to talk about Aries. Again, I feel like Aries is really just like the stage this is happening on in all of our lives, whatever that stage is for you. If it's fourth house, it's family, right? If it's third house, it's within your, your friends and how you communicate and even maybe, you know, um, things that you're trying to learn, wanting to learn, like it's probably happening a lot in any classes you're taking, et cetera. So just giving some examples there. But getting into talking about Taurus now. So we've been in this energy too for a while. Uh, Jupiter conjunct Uranus. I know. We, every, everyone's been talking so much about it. Um, hi, the Phoenix rising. Hello. Hello, guys. I know I've been wanting to like get back into the chat, but I know I'm going to throw myself off. <laughs> so I just want to stay focused. <clears throat> but Jupiter conjunct Uranus is still very strong this week. We have passed the peak when Jupiter was exact, con exactly conjunct Uranus on 420, it was probably a very interesting weekend for some of us. I know it was for me. <laughs> I know it was for me. There was, uh, uh, yeah, it was an inter interesting energy. But I've talked about this aspect before. This is This aspect is helping to break foundational things. And what I mean by that is physical foundations, that could be health related, finance related, or related to work, um, or even self esteem. Self worth seems to be a theme too this week, but I think Pluto is part of that, bringing things up from the depths, right? 
Also, it could be about belief systems, shattering your own belief systems, um, how you view truth, reality, um, even like consciousness activation and expansion is part of that too. And the emotional stuff. So this is something that is also very important that we've been in and is getting amplified this week. Emotional attachments. Emotional attachments and even like memories and things that we're harboring and we're holding on to, Scorpio's bread and butter, they're breaking, okay? They're breaking, we are breaking away from them and it is for a reason because things that are breaking need to be broken. The things that are breaking, I know for some people, especially where you're experiencing more of like the physical breaking of things, like work, money, home, that sort of deal, or even health, I know how jarring that is and I know how scary that is but it is serving a purpose it's allowing the light to break through in the dark where it's been needing to you know and whether that be some sort of truth that maybe you didn't realize about how you were living or maybe even to folk like I'm speaking to the physical people right or maybe even realizing that it was your comfort zone and maybe actually wasn't as fulfilling for you as other things could be or other ways of doing things or being could be. You know what I'm saying? But I, I get it. I get that it's hard when that kind of thing happens. So just know that Jupiter conjunct Uranus is still doing that. And that is part of the force I was talking about wherever you have Taurus in your houses, that there's pressure going on there. There's pressure, there's breaking, there's cracking, but it is for a reason. It is for a purpose. And so just allow that to break whatever is breaking there. And that will translate over to whatever's going on in your neighboring house of Aries, um, as far as actual changes are concerned, okay? Now, this conjunction is also trying Lilith and Virgo, Ceres and Capricorn, and Sextile, the White Rabbit, um, Asteroid, and Cancer. Uh, so this is gonna definitely bring some changes to home and family and work. There's, there's kind of no if, ands, or buts about it. Um, even what you believe to be home or family, they're bringing up sanctuary again. And it's also gonna really help our sense of independence and sense of selves as well. So it's really just liberating. It is, it is liberating, it is freeing. Might not always look how we want or feel how we want it to feel. When things break, it doesn't always feel super great, right? But it is definitely for our own benefit, okay? Yeah, I wrote supporting true sanctuary that we are being asked to look at or consider under the full moon Scorpio. Yes, 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 yes. Ooh, wait, what is this? Hold on. I just got a, I just got this weird twinge of something. Hold on. I don't know if I talked enough about the emotional, like emotional attachments, but also emotional guards as well. Some of you may experience this as like a heart opening, cracking open. Keep in mind with the full moon Scorpio, a lot of vulnerability, a lot of feeling very raw, like a raw nerve or just like very exposed. And that can be very uncomfortable for some people. By the way, don't forget to like the video if you're in here and enjoying it, just because we do have 400 people. We have 140 likes. So please, please, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but coming back. Yeah, something. Uh, yeah. Some people may feel very, very uncomfortable around people this week. But if you're feeling like extreme levels of discomfort, I would even say it might be a slight indication as well of how much you've really been hiding from people, how much you've been hiding your true self or how much you've been unable to just relax and be open with other people. So something to just keep in mind. Okay. Now moving on. Ah, let's talk about Pisces. Yeah, I wrote jump in. <laughs> so funny. So we just talked about the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, right? So Mars is having an interesting transit this week. So at the beginning of the week, Mars, well, Mars is in Pisces all week. Just want to say that. But the beginning of the week, Mars is sextile that Jupiter Uranus conjunction and opposing Lilith. But then it ends in a conjunction with Neptune and sextile the Pluto. Remember, Pluto is super important this week. I think I already mentioned it. Oh, you know what? Okay, actually, this one is, this is worth reading to you. I, I make so many notes, you guys. And it's crazy, too, because it's like, I don't even feel like I write notes to look at them when I'm going live. I feel like I write notes to just like, how do I want to say? It feels like automatic writing a lot of times when I'm making my notes. Um, but anyway, uh, Pluto and Aquarius is digging up buried emotions, hopes, dreams, trauma, desires, fears, 
time to be realistic about what you've been forcing, when to pull back, when to allow something to have to happen in its proper timing and natural development, when there are real threats of danger, manipulation, control, and where you can find empowerment in evicting your boogeymen uh, who make you afraid of these things. And then I put full moon Scorpio in there. That's what Pluto is doing. Pluto is like a welcome friend right now. Maybe it might feel a little tough love, but it's a welcome friend right now. But anyway, let's come back to Mars for a second. So in the beginning of the week, Mars is in that sextile with this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction and is also opposing Lilith. It's allowing for opportunities of detaching, okay? It's allowing for opportunities to detach from expectations, to detach from anything we've been obsessed about, emotionally attached to, even yearning for. Like this is something that came up in the Full Moon Scorpio Live too. Um, like we actually got like the star card, the 10 of cups, like around justice. And normally I think most readers would read that as like, oh, you're getting what you want, but that's not how it felt. It felt like realizing there's been too much expectation or attachment to wanting a certain dream or wish fulfillment or whatever. And maybe just to realize that if it's for you, it's going to happen in its natural way. Or even that maybe you've been trying to force something or wanting something that really is not for you, no matter how much you want it to be. And then you get to reclaim all that energy back. You get to reclaim all that emotional energy back for yourself and putting into other things that are in your present that you do want or that are fulfilling for you, that is fulfilling for you, are, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, it, anyway, so just want to mention that Mars and Pisces is helping us to detach from these things and really liberating us on that front, the emotional front, which is nice. The opposition to Lilith, though. <laughs> oh, Lilith. <laughs> the opposition to Lilith. I, I do feel that temptation of pushing there with Lilith and Virgo. So just keep in mind to balance that, right? Um, and then we move into the end of the week with Mars. Mars working with Neptune and sextile Pluto. This is this one's going to be fun. When I saw that, I was like, yeah, we need that. We so need that right now. So it's happening at the end of the week, but it's going to intensify as we get deeper into May. So just also know that when you have Mars working with Neptune in Pisces, it, it can bring about this optimism of, you know what? I always thought I couldn't do that. I'm going to go try to do that. You know, I always thought this was too hard or too out there or too fantastical. I'm going to go and try to do that. But the sextile to Pluto almost makes it more realistic. Without the Pluto factor, having Mars just working with Neptune in Pisces can bring about a little bit of like illusionary thinking of being a little unrealistic and like not really grounded so much in what you're doing and why you're doing it. But the sextile to Pluto really helps that because it's actually bringing up the truth, you know, um, and Pluto also, also asks us in, I don't want to say, sorry, words. <laughs> Pluto also brings about more of a focus for success and succeeding and achieving. But there's such a truth behind Pluto too, you know? I will say though, if anybody is like generally ungrounded um, or generally like fearful, this aspect might be a little harder to navigate. Okay, because while Pluto is helping, it's still a lot of Piscean, Neptunian energy, you know, and if you already lean into being kind of like wavery in that, it's only going to be stronger. But if you are a very grounded individual and you're a very like realistic individual, this is actually going to help you to be a little bit more inspired and a little bit more trusting and a little bit more like, oh, I don't have to be so like rigid in things and I can actually like go and face that head on and just see what happens. So I love that. I love that being there. Um, yes, 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 yes. Let's move on. Oh, Venus. Oh, well, I, Venus is doing some stuff. Uh, will you post affirmations for this week? The previous ones really helped. Oh, Christy. Um, I post them as they come up for me personally. You know what I mean? So it's not something I plan which to be honest is also like the way I naturally function in the world. Um, I kind of have to feel things and I really do have to be in the flow, but I started posting affirmations as I've just been communing and just sitting with spirit and also journaling. And then as these affirmations come up for me, it's like, oh, you know what? I could see how that could help people. And then I go and I post them. And there is one that I haven't posted yet. 
I don't know if it's really the vibe of this week, though. It was really more the vibe of last week, but eh, I'll probably still post it. I don't know. But yeah, if affirmations come up, I, I, I'd be posting them. I'd be posting them. Um, but yeah, those affirmations are literally just from between me and spirit. Like, it's not like, like I don't have an affirmation book or anything that I'm looking at. Um, so it just comes from my own work, my own self-work, my own spirit work. Anyway, moving on. Let's talk about Venus. Oh, Venus. So this, when we, okay, actually, before we dive into Venus, I want to say this. The way Venus can be working for you can be more in the realm of how you're using your energy for your own personal, like, passions and fun and live in life, okay? That can be in terms of, like, mission work or work. That could be in terms of literally just, I'm going to go do something because it's fun and it makes me happy. Uh, it could even be in terms of like love and romance because we are talking about Venus and an Aries, no less. Very flirty, playful energy there. So everything I'm about to say, just know that like the context of that, you got to discern for yourself of how that's playing out in your own life. Okay. And I would, and I would definitely look at, you know, even just the house that it's in to as an indication there, but only you, you know, your life better than anyone else, right? Be the masters of your own lives. Okay. Now let's talk about Venus. So all week, Venus is conjunct Eris, Aries, Aries's feminine counterpart in a way. Um, I often say Eris is like the street fighter. It's like, you know, Eris, Eris does seek out justice and Eris has no qualms about doing what they feel is right and just no matter how it's coming across. So the fact that that's working with Venus, there's definitely more of an outspoken and a sort of way that we're going about our, our lives. I really want to say it's our lives. It feels, it, relationships are part of this, but there's such a push of live your life to the fullest way that you want. 444, by the way. So again, just take it in your own context. So that's happening all week, but from the beginning of the week to the end of the week, Venus also has interesting transition. Venus by the beginning of the week is still working with Chiron pretty closely. And it will be square Ceres and the White Rabbit asteroid. Both of those asteroids, Ceres and the White Rabbit, are both speaking to our balance of work and home and legacy and sanctuary and all of that. So Venus working with Chiron is squaring that. And then by the end of the week, Venus is squaring Pluto. And that square with Pluto will be coming stronger, will be getting stronger in the following week. So it's an interesting vibe, okay? So... <laughs> Yeah, it's an interesting vibe. Hold on, I'm just actually going over my notes for a second. I'm just going to read you my notes because I feel like it was, it's just the way it came out of me was way more concise in my notes than how it wants to come through me right now. So struggle to balance responsibilities of work and relationships and home, but there is catharsis potential here. Uh, monetizing pain can be beneficial for my creatives out there. Watch the ego when attempting to share creations Increase sensitivity to judgment and criticism. Expect shifts within relationships sparked from power, authoritative, control, manipulation, sexual frustration or sexual aggression or themes of anger, um, irritation, agitation. This is going to bring up some big triggers potentially and unhealthy relationships will fall away potentially in a dramatic way. Um, but relationships that are strong and healthy will actually grow and deepen. Um, under these influences by way of being authentic and communicating about these issues and new romances and new friendships right now might be feeling very like powerful in the beginning but also be very short-lived potentially okay so yeah yeah so relationships or even how you create and have fun and want to just like be might spark these moments of insecurity and I was getting a little bit of paranoia too especially for anybody who like from that whole Pisces angle too is already susceptible to like being ungrounded and getting kind of caught up in you know that sort of vibe you know that <laughs> you gotta do that um yeah it feels like these moments of what is that person doing what are they really up to what do they really mean by that what are they really saying by that or even just feeling extra sensitive to people's words and behavior at this time, like easily threatened um, was something that was coming up too. And so just don't be surprised if people are a little snippety or you're a little snippety or people feel a little extra threatened or people like people feel the need to like be protective of themselves or 
justify themselves or stand up for themselves or prove themselves even and you guys could also be potentially experiencing that too the whole proving the self thing that that one feels really strong too and that feels like a self-worth thing um if you feel like you need to prove yourself to people by communicating a certain way or acting a certain way or trying to have a certain image be very mindful of that because it's just an indication that there's other things going on that are making you feel relatively insecure right so again, many, many ways that can come up about in your lives, but that's that's the energy we're working with, with Venus square Pluto, okay? And that's going to, like I said, intensi intensify into the following week, all right? But it's already starting off with Venus working with Chiron, which kind of plays on that. So like the level of vulnerability, it's interesting how I'm feeling it. It's like, maybe feeling like vulnerable and insecure and then kind of like what I was saying before in other lives about like, what happens when you starve an animal and put it in a corner, right? It lashes out. So it's like insecure, insecure, insecure. And then people might be getting a little bolder about acting from those insecurities, right? Or, or acting out of those feelings of like, I think this person's a threat or I think what they're doing is a threat, et cetera. Okay. Okay. Now here's where with Pluto, um, here's a little bit of a helpful support from Pallas Athena in Sagittarius. Okay. Pluto is sextile Pallas Athena in Sag at the end of the week. And that is going to be coming, is going to, excuse me, is going to be getting stronger as we move into uh, the following week as well, which is nice. For anybody who's not familiar with Pallas Athena, Pallas Athena is very like Libran in nature. She represents wisdom, knowledge, balance, harmony, resolution, right? She like Pallas Athena likes to come in and anchor ground out situations and find the best solutions for to rectify things right to put things right to set things straight essentially so to have pluto being the one that's digging things up and also working with um, a celestial body that's all about making things right is like huh <laughs> good that's good we like that no matter what the solutions are right whether it's just perspective on ourselves or other people or things that we're doing or things that we're craving or yearning for, like whatever it may be for you, right? So yeah, so just know that. And something else that was coming through and I mentioned this already, if a lot of this is happening more in like, just the way you find pleasure in life and like what makes you happy, like what makes you excited to do, like to do certain things, or maybe you're really focused on your sense of purpose and fulfillment or your sense of mission work or even your work, this actually would bring about this feeling of like, you know, I think I actually need to go and and have some different experiences to get a better handle on, on what I actually want or how I actually wanna navigate certain things, right? especially with Sagittarius and Aquarius kind of working with each other there, that I was getting stuff like volunteering, nonprofits. I was getting like um, maybe even wanting to get into like studying psychology, um, like higher minded sort of ways of going about things as well. Or maybe traveling could be a huge part of that. Um, everyone's different of what's going on in their life, right? So again, you got to understand the very, the spectrum of all these energies. They want me to come back to relationships though. If arguments come up or really difficult moments come up with people in your life, th thank you, this is where it matters. Thank you, this is where it matters. Okay, okay, okay. Um, this aspect will help people to lean into taking things from a bigger perspective, right? Going beyond the ego, going beyond the monkey mind right, to see what's truly going on in a certain dynamic or a certain situation in order to balance it out or to move past it or even grow, just grow as people or grow within your relationships. So that feels really nice too. But coming back to what they were just saying to where it matters, where it matters. Take the eagle view, the eagle's bird eye view on things this week. Nothing wrong with being in it. Nothing wrong with being in the moment. <coughs> oh, hold on. Oh. <coughs> oh. 
<laughs> taking that bird's eye view of situations this week, even if you're just looking at a bird's eye view of yourself, you observing you, that came up in the Scorpio read, I did it yesterday actually, is gonna really help here. Thank you, Bray, for the $5. Thank you so much. I appreciate I appreciate you too. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's just gonna really help to just, again, see the bigger picture of what's going on and why it's happening and what is really important. They're bringing up sanctuary again, which ties into the last aspects I wanna talk about, okay? <clears throat> So the sun officially being in Taurus uh, this week, all week is trying Juno and Virgo. But in the beginning of the week, it's square Pluto. There's Pluto again. But by the end, it's sextile Vesta, which is just like when I saw that and I felt that, I was like, oh, that feels really good. It feels really good. <coughs> Having that trine with Juno all week brings also this lens of when it comes to people you're dealing with, because Juno rules partnership and protection of women is another thing there, but Juno does rule partnership. And in Virgo, it's partnerships of integrity. It's partnerships of support, of health, of balance, right? And like, yes, practical means as well, but it calls, it calls for us to really show up in this way with people that we're dealing with. And if we can't show up in that way with certain people or they can't show up in that way with us, that's kind of all we need to know right now too as far as who and what we value and love and where and how we find sanctuary within ourselves and even with certain people or certain ways of being, right? So the sun being trying Juno also helps with that, hey, look at the bigger picture here and observe. Observe what you're feeling, observe your triggers, observe what this other person's feeling and their triggers, observe how you're functioning versus what your soul really wants to do, right? So just it was just nice to see that come up there. But the way the sun is shifting from that square to Pluto to the sextile of Vesta also speaks to that. Because when the sun is square Pluto, it brings up all this power dynamic bullshit. <laughs> it just does. It brings up this feeling of like, I need to go and be successful. I need to go and feel powerful in whatever ways that is, right? Ingrid, thank you for the $5. Thank you, thank you. Five, five, five. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much um <clears throat> and then we go from that almost like feeling uh <clears throat> kind of on guard a little bit kind of on guard to opportunities of emotional nourishment opportunities of vesta which is sacred flame right it's that blueprint energy um andrew thank you for the three three pounds i think that's pounds <laughs> i think that's pounds thank you um, oh, that Vesta energy by the end of the week feels so good to me. Like, I want love and be loved. Yes. Oh, but really what actually matters? That's what's going to be the biggest perspective here this week. Through all of the triggers and ego battles and feeling insecure or feeling threatened and all of those like bleh, like kind of emotions, we get this window especially by the end of the week, I really want to emphasize that, of just observing all of it for what it is, and then also in turn, getting some huge, huge insights on the self and what we value and who we value and being able to prioritize that and really seeing what really matters at the end of the day beyond all of those feelings, right? But again, you can thank Fullman Scorpio for amplifying all of this. So that's what's going on this week astrologically. I didn't mean to go on and on and on. <laughs> Apparently I had a lot to say today. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really feel like doing a collective read. I don't think it's important to do a collective read right now. Um, although, hmm, hmm, I'm gonna sit with that for a second while I lubricate. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the collective read, and we're just gonna go right into elementals. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Just getting all the cards out. Let's see. So instead of doing the collective read, 
Um, for each elemental group, I'm also going to do an oracle card as well. Boom, let's go. We had so much astrology, it's probably uh, not needed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> a cute water bottle. Oh, thank you. I've had that for quite a bit. Getting here a little late. Hello, hello. It's all good. <laughs> do fire. Thanks, Scorps. I'm on a break at work. Um, <clears throat> let's see who wants to go first. <sighs> who wants to go first for this week? <sighs> We're going to go with air signs. <laughs> okay. All right, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, <laughs> Ingrid, water. I almost felt water. We'll see who goes second, but Air is going to go first. <clears throat> Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Gemini, oh, Libra, Aquarius. It's funny, so you said water and I was feeling water. Air signs, you feel a little watery, actually, which is not surprising. It is a full moon Scorpio. Um... I don't know if something feels disappointing. I'm getting a little bit of like five of cups. Like I'm actually, okay, that's what it is. It's regret. <clears throat> getting a little bit of regret. Um, some of you may experience this as disappointment. Some of you may experience it as regret. It feels like air signs, the clarity that's coming through for you. Oh yeah, it's just making you feel some kind of way. It's this feeling of like, it's not what I thought it was. That's, that's the feeling. Like, it's not what I thought it was. They aren't who I thought they were. Um, someone could not be like living up to expectations, but again, expectations, we gotta be worried. We gotta be careful about expectations. Some of you, it's the opposite. Like maybe you thought like not so great about somebody and then come to find out you were wrong. Hmm. <clears throat> Very specific air signs. All right, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This could even be about work. It doesn't have to be about a person. Um, it can be about work. It can be about something you were just trying out for a bit. It feels like something relatively new is what that feels like to me. Again, probably something that came up in the last couple months. Probably This is probably part of your Mercury retrograde lesson, air signs. So think back to mid-March, like around the uh, equinox. Yeah, think back to what was going on around the equinox. What came into your life around the equinox? What shifted around the equinox for you that you've been dealing with since then or involved with since then? Yeah, it's like whatever you thought about it or how you ever felt about it, you're realizing it's the opposite is kind of what's coming through. So there's disappointment there. And again, for some of you, there may be regret. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm hearing things like flash in the pan. Any messages or insights for my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Some of you might have made a permanent decision on something that was temporary. Oh, well, that just came flying out. <clears throat> I didn't like, that just like had to fly to my mouth. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Oh, 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 we're not fucking around, are we air signs? Chiron with heel 28 a cyclical energy and then we have these intertwining snakes here oh yeah this that's something that's coming through it's like some of you made permanent choices on something that was temporary this feels like air signs you may you may be learning a bit here or gaining some insight into how quickly you judge things, how quickly you are to, yeah, to place judgment, to call something out <clears throat> or to put it, put it in a box, to put a label on it is how that's coming through. Interesting. Ooh, again, this could be about a person or it could be about so many other things, but like, it feels like it's something that came up around the spring equinox. This might be very collective as well. That things that came up around the spring equinox when we went into the pre-shadow phase for Mercury retrograde is uh, coming up to have some things revealed, especially now that we're on the stationary direct tail end of Mercury retrograde. 
but that's what I'm getting. Yeah. Yeah. Realizing that not everything needs to have a label or a box or thank you, or be so black and white or be so black and white. Mm. Should we pull another card? No, they said move on. All right, let's get the animals out here. <clears throat> Gemini, Libra. Yeah, I keep, I keep getting this like five of cups feeling. <clears throat> Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Yeah, I keep getting the word judgment. I keep getting the word judgment. Not like judgment card, but like literally placing judgment. Calling judgment. And with that, there's also um, some clarity. And I don't even want to say the word lesson, but I think some of you are seeing this as a lesson. And maybe for some of you, it is a lesson. Um, <clears throat> that, I don't want to say, it's a timing thing. It's not about timing. Ah, that everything ebb and flow, ebbs and flows. Everything ebbs and flows. Nothing can stay consistent. Nothing can stay high and up and feeling good. And nothing can really stay truly like, like down. Everything has a cycle. Everything shifts. So if you're placing judgment on something that's that's literally like shifting an ebb and flow or wherever it's at, you're kind of doing it a disservice or an injustice or even yourself. Okay, interesting. All right. <clears throat> Oh, by the way, for those who are new, this is called the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit Deck. It is linked below for your convenience. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Mmm, lizard. That's my overwhelm card. That's my empath overload card. Overstimulated, overloaded, stressed out. Something, something was too much. This it might also be why you felt like you had to make a choice or you had to, I keep doing this, like, or you had to call judgment on something. Mm. I keep getting stuff about lessons for you, air signs. This might also just be like a reminder. I'm gonna say a reminder, a gentle reminder that if you are in an exacerbated state, like you're stressed or you're tired or you're overwhelmed or whatever, you're probably not gonna be making the most grounded decisions. I feel like a decision was made, a judgment was made in a moment where you were not feeling your best. <clears throat> Something happened too fast, you were pressured into it, or you were overloaded or stressed out, something like that. And now you're looking back and something something about this week is making you look back and reflect and realizing that you, you, maybe it was not so great to do that, or maybe there, like you misstepped, misstepped or missed the mark there. <clears throat> Anything else for my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Yeah, where was the integrity? Ooh, lion. A lot of fire going on in your in your reading, air signs. But you know, we got a lot of fire going on with Aries, and Aries seems to be a huge component in your reading with Chiron being here. But the lion card, lion is king of wands for me in this deck. It's the mastery of fire. It's this mastery and ability to maintain your own reserves and resources and energy as far as your physical vitality is concerned. So knowing when to push, knowing when to rest, knowing when to talk, knowing when to stand back, it's all about how do you manage your own vitality and energy and fire. I feel like this is for air signs where you are just in a bad spot, a bad moment, and you were not regulated you were not calibrated, you were not balanced in this moment. And so you're looking back and maybe now you, you've learned that, maybe that you've been learning that through this Mercury retrograde on how to self-regulate, right? And also not allowing that to lead to bad decisions for yourself. Um, yeah, that's also how it's coming through, like bad decisions for self, like learning not to not make choices that are not good for your energy or just not good for your own health or vitality. It keeps coming back to vitality for you. Um, yeah, and even just the timing of when to speak and when to act. There's a lot of lessons going on here, air signs. All right, can I get one more? One more for my air signs, please, and then we'll move on. Oh, oh I did, I did. I thought, <laughs> I thought I didn't write the timestamp. I was like, ah, 
<laughs> I did. I did that. Okay. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Oh my God, more fire. <laughs> oh, fire all over the place. Oh, okay. I'm kind of liking this though. We have Cheetah and Hummingbird coming out here. Hmm. If this is something you can rectify, you're going to. If this is something you can rectify, you're going to. I also feel a lot of you are moving into more vitality, actually more vitality, more energy. You're going to feel like you have more resources at your disposal to just like keep your own balance and to function and to do daily life. I'm definitely getting that too. But the hummingbird is normally like a burst of positive energy, uplifted energy. Yeah, again, if it's something you can rectify and hold yourself accountable to, you're going to do it. And I do see that. I absolutely see that. But I also see that this like moment, while it's also like a sobering, like, dang, <laughs> I could have done better. You're moving on. You're moving on from it, no matter what. Even if you're going to rectify it and then move on, you're just progressing forward. And that feels really good, having learned this lesson. Hmm. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and pull some tarot cards here. <gasps> Excuse me. Didn't get a not notification. Oh, uh, just double check your settings. Sometimes the algorithms do change that. Sometimes the algorithms change people's settings and even who you're subscribed to or not subscribed to. So just definitely check on that if you want to be notified for the next live, okay? On all of your favorite content creators. Uh, we're on air. We're doing air signs, even though they're basically coming up like fire sign. <laughs> uh, Gemini. Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. All right, tell me about lizard. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Lizard with the four of swords. Like I said, you were, you were not in a good way. <laughs> That's what I'm getting with that. Four of swords is a card of recovery. Taking some time out, taking some self-care, whether you're sleeping some more or you're just like doing spa weekends, it's it's needing it's needing space. It's needing space to recover and to calibrate oneself. Um, whatever you did, whatever judgment you placed, whatever decision you made, I I gotta be honest. It does feel like it was out of I don't want to say desperation, but that's kind of like desperation for the four of swords, like a very desperate act to get what your needs met essentially to get your needs met. I just keep getting there was a misstep here or it's like you didn't like, or it wasn't done like in a ethical way. I just keep getting that. Like there's something about the integrity was compromised, but because you were compromised, because you were compromised. And so took your space, got your needs met. And now here you are reflecting. Interesting. All right, tell me about the lion. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, there it is, temperance. Temperance is a card of resolution and healing and harmony. It's also Sag, Pallas Athena, Sag kind of coming through here. Now that you're here and you can look back, I yeah, I just keep getting, it's like, oh... <laughs> It's such a moment of, oh, <laughs> oh, I see. I see what happened there. Um, again, some of you, if you can mend this, you will probably go and mend this if it's mendable. Um, but I also feel like air signs, this whole, I feel like this is speaking to whole Mercury retrograde for you, honestly, in this reading. So where are we, April? It feels like we're already in May. Honestly, I feel like it's like May 12th today. <laughs> I like I'm in May 12th today, but whatever. Anyway, uh, it's been a very healing period of time for you is also what I'm getting with the temperance card. It's been a very, very healing period of time for you. You understand your needs more. You understand how to maintain your own energy and balance way better than you did whenever, whenever this happened. Um, you've learned what you've needed. You've gained the tools that you've needed and you're just reflecting. All right, now let's look at cheetah and hummingbird. Let's take a peek here. Mm. 
Tell me about cheetah and hummingbird from my air signs. Sally, the cards are going quiet. Oh, just as I said that. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, eight of Swords and the Three of Pentacles. Is this mendable? Three of Pentacles can be a card of repair. It's also a card of plans, making plans, um, building things up with other people, collaborating, that sort of deal, right? But I keep getting it's about it's about repair. Can it be repaired? Can it not be repaired? Can I do this? Can I not do this? Mm. I'm also hearing starting over, starting over, no matter what. I mean, we're all moving forward no matter what, right? We all make mistakes. We're all human. It's part of growing. It's part of being here. Part of Earth School. <laughs> For anybody who was here last week and that card came out, it's part of Earth School. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, um, take your moment of reflection. It's clearly helping you. Um, it's clearly helping you, even if the Three of Pentacles is more about you starting to plant seeds moving forward and with these lessons learned, um, or needing to, or wanting to repair something that was damaged in the process of learning this lesson. Anything else for Gemini, Libra, Aquarius? Victory! Six of Wands. I'm not worried about your air signs. I'm not worried about you. This actually seems like a very clean cut, simple. Um, I was human. I fucked up. I get it now. I've grown. I've learned. Maybe I can make it right. Maybe I can't, but I got to move on either way. Any final cards for my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Yep, discernment. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, you might be making things right. Look what just came out here. <laughs> Queen of Swords, Three of Cups, and the King of Swords. Definitely high potential to make things right if something did go kafluffle between you and other people, no matter what the context was, whether this was work, friendship, family, whatever. Um, but either way, you learned what you needed to learn and you're all the wiser for it, and you are gonna move forward, whether you mend something or not, but this is saying that high potential um, to make things right with another person, or other people, maybe this happened with more than just one person. Overall, we do have the Nine of Wands, Ten of Wands, Ooh, Magician, oh Lordy. Ah, Five of Wands, and then look, we got Judgment. This feels like the thick of how do I want to say, of marinating on what did not go right. <laughs> it's like, is what that feels like to me. Nine, 10, five of wands, that does not feel good. There's an ace of wands there, there's a four of wands there. But the fact that you are the magician right in the middle, it is just having that very mature stance of, okay, I see it, I take accountability, it didn't feel good, I'm not going to beat myself up over it. If I can make it right, I'm going to make it right. But either way, I got to move on, right? Because you are placing judgment on yourself, actually, here. So it's very interesting. We started with this feeling of like, you're place, you've been placing judgment and then realizing the lesson of placing judgment. But in the end, you're placing, you're calling judgment on yourself to make things right. Um, very interesting. Okay. Kerfluffle. It's one of my words. I love that word. I don't know if it's a real word or not, but I love that word. <laughs> it makes me happy to use it. Okay, earth, fire, or water. Oh. We're going with water. Oh, water. I gotta breathe your energy out, man. Water, I tuned into you and it just went boom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Felt like I just, I don't know, just sank really deep within myself. Um, you could be very grounded at this time, water signs. You could be prioritizing that, feeling the need to prioritize that. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Ooh, 
Oh, you know what it is too, water signs? You guys feel pretty like activated. I think that's also what it is I'm feeling. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot moving through water signs right now, which makes sense, full moon Scorpio. Okay, is it just me or is it like, does it feel like a weird time for a full moon Scorpio? I don't know why, but suddenly like feeling this, I'm like, I keep wanting to put the full moon Scorpio in May for some reason. Like, like it doesn't belong in April, it belongs in May. I don't know why I feel that way. <laughs> uh, I know in Vedic, technically that full moon will be in Scorpio. Um, so maybe that's just what I'm feeling. Maybe I'm just feeling the juxtaposition of like the different studies of astrology here. Um, absolutely, LOL, yes. I'm like, something about this, I want to be in May. <laughs> kind of feels like it's here so fast. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think there's something just timeline-wise, too. I'm just like, I am in May right now. Something about April feels complete, and I just want to be in May. I don't know, it's very interesting. Anyway, water signs. <laughs> it's such a weird thing coming in for water signs, but that makes sense if you guys are in this kind of place. <laughs> cancer Pisces Scorpio cancer yeah okay I gotta stop water signs I don't know where you are <laughs> or when you are but I feel like a lot of water signs are like straddling timelines or something like your energy feels very portal like right now um and I think that could just be the effect of Scorpio If I were to give you tarot cards for what this feels like, it feels like magician meets high priestess is what this feels like. Maybe even meets nine of, nine of swords. Like, <laughs> it's, a weird, it's a weird energy. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Water signs. Some of you are learning to hold yourselves very deeply with it. Okay, there's a lot that wants to come through. Water signs. Some of you are learning to hold yourselves very, very, very deeply within yourself. Definitely getting like sacral. Okay, this is gonna be a weird read. I just gotta go with it. Um, those of you who work with your womb space, um, a lot like some of you are learning how to do that as far as like getting into the quantum field of your womb and how to do soul retrieval that way. That could also be part of this too. So you guys are doing some uh, soul retrieval work. Water signs, I can feel some of you are, are a little sensitive to people right now. You may need a lot of physical space. Yeah, I think you're just really sensitive right now, water signs. Okay. Oh, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. People might be, sorry, yeah. People might be reacting weird to you as well because you are so sensitive. Like people might be aware of your sensitivity. Like people might be aware that you're aware of them. <laughs> like even more so than normal and it could be freaking some people out. Like they know you're picking up on their emotions. They know that you're picking up on their thoughts. They know that you're picking up on them. And that could be freaking some people out. Could be making some people very um, anxious around you. Maybe won't even lash out around you. I would, I don't wanna say don't take it personal, but take it to from that higher mind like we were talking about with astrology of just observing what the human is doing, right? Am I taking these? No. Cappy made an appearance. Got a strong cap in your chart, but Cappy is important right now too. Let's see. Yeah, okay, water signs. It's like you're here, but you're not here. You're here, but you're not here. Oh, look at that. Pisces. Sensitize. Almost want to say sensitive. <laughs> yeah, you are water signs. You're just in your deep waters. You're in deep waters right now and to the point where you might, people might feel like you're not really there. Like you're there, but you're not really there. Yeah, I just want to say it's like being in magician high priestess mode. Some of you could be having really, really intense dreams or thank you, or the opposite, very murky, chaotic dreams. 
I guess I would still be considered intense. Just stay in that place. Honestly, just stay in that place of, of holding yourself very deeply, very closely, because I do feel like water signs, you definitely are a little bit more sensitive right now with all these energies of Pisces and Scorpio going on. Um, so just try to hold on to yourself as best you can. And if people can't act right around you, that's not your problem, okay? All right. Let's get into the animals from my water signs. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Yeah, I'm, ugh, water signs. I can't get away from this feeling of people just being kind of weirded, weirded out by your energy. But again, that has more to do with them than you. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Yeah, because water signs, you're susceptible to that. I mean, we're all susceptible to the foam and Scorpio energy. But because of that water, the water... Oh, I don't want to say this. I don't want to say this. Um, people can't hide shit around you right now. There. People can't hide shit around you right now. People feel on display around you. Their problem, not yours. All right. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Mm. <laughs> oh, the throat chakra. I got chills, sorry. Not sorry. I got chills with this. I don't feel like you're saying much of anything, actually. I feel like the black egg is very much like egg. <laughs> egg. Not gonna share. <laughs> That's what I'm getting with water signs. Yeah, you're very quiet. You're very quiet. And that also could be like putting people off. They they know that there's a lot that you know or are feeling and you're not saying it. This is like such like, I'm like, I'm literally seeing people in a room, like around the water sign, whether you're Cancer, Pisces or Scorpio, and like you're just observing, but people know that like you can see them. <laughs> And because you're not saying anything, it's like, it, right? It's like making them uncomfortable. Um, oh, thank you. Some of you guys are going to get some clarity. Definitely on how people, like why people react to you the way that they do. But also some of you guys are going to get a lot of clarity on how much of a mirror you are. Um, how much of an empath you actually are. And that when people are acting a little cray cray. <coughs> it's really just that. Hold, hold on a second. <laughs> this is not an all-inclusive universal statement of what I'm about to say, but some of you may become aware that what people say about you is really, um, <coughs> interesting. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm mercy. Oh. Let's try this again. What people say about you is really their attempt to figure you out. It's almost always not true, is what I'm getting. <coughs> An attempt to figure you out and to make you uncomfortable because you can figure them out and make them uncomfortable even if you're not saying it. Um, <coughs> others of you, when people also are talking about, it's just funny, it's coming out as about you, right? It's them also just talking about themselves and what you're actually perceiving within them even if you don't ever say it. <coughs> Whew, okay. Yeah, the figuring you out. I like I can't get away from that. I can't get away from that. I can't get away from that. Figuring you out, figuring you out, figuring you out. Um it's really just stemming from being uncomfortable, is really all it is. Anything else for my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and like level the playing field. Weird. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Ooh. 
you get horse, horsey horse water signs. I like that for you. Horse is <clears throat> master of earth. Multitasker, knows how to flow, knows how to juggle, knows how to do it all. But it's also a card of independence, stamina, grace, beauty. Why is the horse coming out for my water signs? It's about the integrity. Yeah, it's about the integrity. It's about the integrity. Water signs, you guys are pretty good at discerning truth. But there's something about how you're holding your words that actually is bringing more integrity to your the situations you're finding yourselves in. Oh, Crystal Waters, thank you for the 9.99. I think I felt it coming. So I was like, I need to look at the camera. Thank you for the 9.99. Yeah, you're finding that you're actually able to practice much more integrity by sharing way less. There's are you already don't share everything because you're water signs. But I'm also feeling this sharing way less. If there's anything you guys are working on project wise, don't share it. Do not talk about it right now. Cancer Pisces Scorpio. Esp yeah, okay, thank you. They're bringing me back to the whole the reason why it's also bringing you more integrity um, to share less is because the way people are reacting to you right now too. Okay. People seem very reactionary to you right now because your energy just is what it is. All right, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Ooh, oh, as we just said that. Eee, oh, Scorpion. Oh, yikes. Okay, Scorpion is an attacking energy. Scorpion comes out when we're holding on to things that make us feel uncomfortable, that make us feel a little angry. And I do feel like this is actually coming from other people and it's just being brought up within them around you, especially if you got any Scorpio in your chart. This woman Scorpio is going to amplify that magic that Scorpio has to dig things up out of people by just existing. <laughs> but my water signs, I think, are all susceptible to this right now. Okay. Um, the other, the other reason that they're bringing this up too, this whole like find more integrity by not by actually not speaking as much. Um, when people do this and treat you this way, it may bring up some of your own energy of things that you are still harboring or holding on to um, and it's going to give you some insight into what needs to be released and let go but it's so much better to not react is really what i'm getting for you water signs do not react do not react observe observe silently observe don't react just observe because the other thing is too when people act out they know it <laughs> Right. As humans, we all know when we're acting out. We all know when we're acting out of a trigger. We all know when someone makes us uncomfortable. So if people are getting aggro around you or whatever and you don't react, they also have time to reflect and realize, oh, <laughs> why did I do that to Waterside? <laughs> you know, this is an interesting reading. This is very interesting. All right, let's go ahead and pull some tarot cards here. Black egg for my water signs. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. <clears throat> We're all learning, yes. Tell me about black egg. Two of Cups is showing at the bottom. Tell me about black egg. Woo! Chariot. <sighs> the way to succeed is to silence. Hold on. We had a bunch of other cards come out. I'm not taking them, but just to give you a little flash of what the other cards were that came out. Ugh. But yeah, Black Egg and Chariot. If you're making moves, don't talk about it. The way to success is by practicing integrity of what you share and why you're sharing it. I'm also getting the judgment thing too that I picked up with air signs a little bit. It, for some of you, there might be temptation to, how do I want to say, comment, comment on certain moves that people are making. <clears throat> it's not necessary right now. It's not necessary. Yeah, wow. 
Chariot and the Six of Swords. So much about movement. So much about movement here. I just keep getting that same message. If you're making moves right now, don't say it. Don't talk about it. It's, it's only for you to know. It's only for you to know. Hold on. There's something else going off the throat here. <clears throat> Wait, what is that? Some of you may be going through an activation or an upgrade in your throat, which is interesting because there's so much here about like practicing integrity with what you share and when not to share. But I feel like that's almost part of it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They confirm that. So some of you are going to start becoming more quiet, generally speaking, but that's because your throat is actually more calibrated. Sometimes when people have an imbalanced throat chakra or even a closed off one, they actually speak a lot but it's speaking a lot of like things that don't really matter <clears throat> or things that are unnecessary out of this feeling like I should be talking now is kind of is kind of what I'm getting. But I feel like water signs, you're actually moving into more of a quiet, like a quiet, not quieter voice. It's just not speaking as much. And then when you speak, you speak more simply, more profoundly, more intentional but that's because your throat is actually upgraded and you're not speaking mindlessly or to fill the space. Interesting. All right, let's move on to horse. Tell me about horse. <clears throat> I keep getting this uneasiness around you though, that people are very uneasy about this. Um, again, not your problem. All right, horse with eight of wands. Again, making moves. You got three cards about movement. <laughs> Movement and progression and advancement. Uh, all right. Some of you, this could literally be about work or moving or traveling. Doesn't have to be, but the cards do imply that. Tell me more about horse. Ooh, water signs, the page of wands. Okay, this, this feels really exciting. Whatever this is, this feels very, very exciting to me for you. This definitely feels like something that's just for you. That's what this feels like. This feels like fun. This feels like adventure. This feels like excitement. This feels like passion projects. And it's just for you. It's not for anybody else. It's just for you. Some of you, could this be dating? This could be dating, but if you are dating, I don't think you're sharing with people that you're dating or that you're flirting with someone or talking to someone. Again, very like hush-hush energies around you, water signs. I like this a lot. I really, really like this a lot. This says that there's some fun coming your way and it's about no one but yourself. Unless it's dating, obviously. Let's look at Scorpion. Tell me about Scorpion and my water signs. Mm. Ooh. Okay. King of Cups. Can I get one more for Scorpion? Mm. Whoa. Yeah. That's kind of what I figured. All right. I was like, it's either going to be Seven of Cups or Nine of Swords. <laughs> King of Cups and the Seven of Cups with Scorpion. So remember what I was saying before about this reaction that people are having to you and then even in turn the way that you are <clears throat> wanting to react. The King of Cups is more mature than that. So you guys have heard me talk about the difference between the Queen of Cups and the King of Cups, right? <clears throat> the Queen of Cups has mastered the emotional internal world, right? How to self-regulate the self. But the King of Cups is this anchor of emotional maturity that can regulate the self while also managing the emotional realms of the people that they're dealing with, okay? Not that it's their responsibility to, but it's also the dynamics that happen between people, right? It's just that's, that's human connection. This is having the maturity that when something is happening around you or people are, are saying crazy things to you or what have you, you can maintain that that pinnacle of emotional and spiritual strength to observe, <clears throat> to observe and not react to the crazy, okay? Even if you're wanting to react, observing yourself in that moment and deciding 
I will make sense of this at a later time, <laughs> essentially, to work through that. So very fascinating. I keep getting people are going to be so irritated around you. Like, I'm sorry to give you that message, but it is just what I'm feeling. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's almost like the more you deepen this energy within yourself, that King Cups energy within yourself, the more people might be aggro around you. Oh, I know. Sorry. Not super fun, but it is what it is. All right, water signs. Let's move on. All right, who's going next? Hold on, me a little sip of... Ah, earth and fire. Ooh, ooh, hoo, hoo. I need a stretch again today. <laughs> earth and fire. Earth and fire, you guys both feel really weird right now. We're gonna go with fire signs. Right. <clears throat> Aries, Leo, Sag for this week. Aries, Leo, Sag. Rainbows may be significant. I just like literally saw like, <laughs> like quick rainbow spectrum just past my vision. Um, that's interesting. That feels really fast too. Aries, Leo, Sag. Aries, Leo, Sag. What's going on for my fire signs this week? I'm feeling a lot of like solar. I'm feeling a lot of solar, but I almost like, uh, ugh. There might be some stuff like being spewed from the solar <laughs> that's coming through. Maybe you're purging. Maybe you guys are purging. Maybe you're breathing fire. There might be some dragons in the room here. Um, Okay, fire signs. I almost want to like calm you down. I feel like there's a lot of like fast moving energy, almost impulsive. Impulsive is what that feels like to me. Impulsive. Oh. Yeah, like the so the solar feels like overactive almost for my fire signs. Aries, Leo, Sag. Oh yeah, I keep wanting to say calm down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hold on. Sorry, guys. Oh. Ugh. Yeah, I want to say calm down. I'm hearing Taurus. I'm hearing Taurus really loud. Um, so some of you could have Taurus in your chart. Obviously, Taurus is important. I, I keep feeling dragon. I keep feeling dragon energy. Um, you could just be really in your dragon. You could just be really in your, like, <laughs> shadow. Aggressor is what I want to say, too. It doesn't have to be you. It could be someone you're dealing with as well. But there's just, it just like there's a lot of impulsive, fast-moving energy flying around that needs to like, like needs to be grounded, needs to come back to a calm. Maybe you're dealing with water signs. Maybe they're making you aggro. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's a joke. It's just a joke. <laughs> oh, you guys got two. We have fourth house with home. Okay. Oh, the very, this is so dragon and second house with resources. I feel like I'm looking at my riches and shiny things and my den. <laughs> totally feels dragon to me. How can I hoard my, my, my gold and my treasure and my jewels and hide in my cave? <laughs> it feels very dragon. <laughs> Sorry, you gotta laugh. You gotta laugh at that. Oh my God. Anyway. Four is obviously very significant for you guys as well. Uh, I can't get away from the visual. Mine. I'll bide. Bide. Oh. Fire signs. You're feeling a little territorial. You're feeling a little protective. You're feeling pretty hyper-focused on your own uh, personal material security is how that's coming through. I, yeah, I keep getting this feeling of threat. You're feeling very protective over what you value and what's important to you. Nothing wrong with that. I just can't get away from the dragon energy. Um, let's see, Aries in second house. Now all I see is seagulls. Oh, interesting. Okay. Ah, oh, fire signs are in their dragon. Okay. 
Yeah, it feels like Taurus is super important for my fire signs right now. Okay. You want what you want. And what's important to you is important to you. And nobody better fuck that up for you. That's kind of where you're at. All right. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. <laughs> uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. I keep hearing Taurus so loud. So loud. What's going on for my fire signs here with fourth house and second house? Hyena wanted to come out. It didn't, but it wanted to. Aries, Leo, Sag. Aries, Leo, Sag. Yeah, it feels like you guys are in planning, preparation, protection mode is how that feels to me for my fire signs. Aries, Leo, Sag. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. I keep hearing Taurus, though. Okay, whoever's resonating with this, you must have, like, an important Taurus house or, like, or just, like, really strong Taurus placements or something. Or maybe you have Taurus, like, placements in Vedic. Vedic keeps coming up here, too. Um, Aries, Leo, Sag. Aries, Leo, Sag. Aries, Leo, Sag. Oh. Oh, hyena came out. I knew it wanted to come out. So this coming out sent chills through my body. I just have to say we have panther, fox, and hyena. You are on the defensive. You are totally on the defensive fire signs. My goodness. Fox is very Gemini to me. Also a neighbor to Taurus. Again, Taurus seems huge here for your reading. Um, but fox is very cunning and very cautious. Fox is very intelligent. Fox will observe and watch and pivot if they don't feel safe. You don't feel safe about something, which is why you're in this protection, planning, preparation, dragon mode. I'm supposed to the dragon's not out here. Panther is a card of catharsis. Hyena is like a seven of swords energy. Hyena is about what's hidden behind the dark side of the moon. What's hidden behind the smile. Fi Gardening noises, really? I don't even know why they have, sorry, I, sorry, I gotta talk about this, little tangent, sorry. I don't know why they, we, like, they hire people to garden here or like, you know, maintain the landscaping. We have we're rocks, we just have rocks everywhere. Maybe we get weeds, I don't know. But I, I'm very sensitive to noise and especially those like specific kind of noises. I really aggravate my nervous system. Probably something related to here going on for you fire signs. But anyway, coming <laughs> like, ah, uh, coming back, coming back. Yeah, you're on the defensive. You're on the defensive. I feel like there's a little bit of that like Pisces energy I was talking about of paranoia and feeling threatened. And please don't be mad that I said that. Hold on a second. <coughs> oh. <coughs> I know. He's so precious. I love him so much. He's got another vet visit today, actually. <laughs> <clears throat> so close. Hold on. <clears throat> oh. Okay. <laughs> Very defensive energy. <clears throat> very defensive, feeling very threatened, and not wanting anyone to know. Also with Panther, I feel a little bit of like, I'm going to attack when I need to. I'm going to stay observant and try to read the room, but I don't feel safe. I don't like what's going on here. I can't really read what's going on around me or with this whole situation of your own personal financial and material security. 
and it doesn't have to be something so grand either. It can even be that like, maybe you guys are struggling financially. Maybe there is something going on. <laughs> <Damn it>. Maybe there is something going on financially or within your home that doesn't feel right to you. And that could be a very valid feeling. That could be a very, very valid feeling. So you have to use your own discernment here, but I'm definitely looking at a fire sign. <laughs> I'm definitely looking at a fire sign that does not feel safe right now about their home life or their material security, financial security and fire signs want to do something about it. Again, that drag that dragon energy. Just be mindful that you're not being pushed into like greedy energy because that's kind of shadow dragon. Um, <clears throat> that you're not being pushed into greedy energy or that you're not being pushed into well, like paranoia, right? There's a difference between, oh, something is not feeling right. Let me like investigate and figure this out. And then there's a whole other realm of like, I'm not trusting anybody because everyone's out to get me or whatever, you know? So figure out where on the spectrum you are in this energy and no judgment. We've, we've all been there. <clears throat> I almost want to pull another animal card for you. Let's get a couple more for my fire signs. For Aries, Leo, Sag. Information. Hold on a second. Uh, information, information, information. Be mindful of where you're getting your information. Um, some of you are in research mode and maybe if you are going through financial stuff, you're trying to counteract whatever you're going through. Um, you know, just be mindful of like where you're getting your information from. I feel a little bit of like faulty word of mouth is what I'm getting. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Some of you are dealing with people who are putting you in fear and you got to recognize that ASAP. You got to recognize that ASAP. If there's anybody who's fearful around you or instilling you a fear, you got to recognize it because it's not going to be conducive to navigating this for you. But yeah, I'm hearing something about faulty word of mouth. Someone could be giving you bad advice and it's up to you to be accountable and diligent in finding out what the truth is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for my fire signs? Aries, Leo. Oh, I asked for two and it gave me two. Oh, interesting. We have starfish and fish <laughs> coming out here, landing on the fox. Something is catching your eye and is tempting with that starfish energy. Starfish is like a captivated, it's kind of like the star card. And then fish is a surrender. Something is catching your attention around <clears throat> you feel like whatever it is you feel so protective about, you're drawn to maybe like an opportunity. Maybe you're drawn to um, something that seems like it's gonna be a good payoff. Maybe you're even drawn to a person. But I feel like there's energies around you making you paranoid about it or making you question it, making you doubt it, making you uneasy. <laughs> Again, faulty word of mouth keeps coming through. I would be very careful about taking anyone's advice that way. Especially if they're just like a friend. Oh my God, that noise is gonna make me nuts. Especially if they're just like a, a family member or a friend versus like actually going to a professional, you know? Um, like if this is about investments, for example, I think I just have to wait for that to pass because it's, it's really gonna make me insane. I'm trying to talk over that. <laughs> it's funny because that feels very disruptive i keep getting there is something very clearly that you feel drawn to do to invest in to go seek out to go find out about or even a person right and I do think it's actually going to be very helpful for you. Okay, good. It's gone. But I think there are disruptive energies around you that could be distracting you from that or even trying to convince you that it's not good for you. So be very mindful. Be very, very mindful. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and do some tarot here. I'm actually getting a little bit of what I picked up on in the air sign reading as well, right? Where there was like 
a judgment place, a, something you, you, you call judgment, you put something in a box, you decided it was black, it wasn't white, and come to find out you had some stuff to learn in terms of that and that you were probably wrong. I'm getting a little bit of that here too. Like, you know this is good for you or you know that this is something that is in the flow and alignment of you and what you're looking for, um, especially in terms of your own sense of security, maybe even legacy for some of you. But these energies could throw you off from that. Yeah, so be mindful, be mindful. Okay. Okay. If you have any air in your chart, I would definitely watch the air sign reading because I think there's there's a correlation going on here between fire and air. <clears throat> Tell me about Panther. That was fast. Ooh. Interesting. Page of Wands. Again, I keep feeling a threat, but Page of Wands is not, shouldn't even be a threat. This is what I'm saying. It's like the way you're feeling defensive or protective or triggered or even what other people are projecting onto you is, is not right. It's like, it doesn't feel, it, it doesn't, it, uh, it just feels like 180 from the truth, which is strange, which is very strange. <laughs> like, <clears throat> excuse me, page of wands can represent the inner child. It can represent good news coming in or news of any kind. Um, it can represent adventure and passion and fun and play and frolic. But you got the panther right there. Some of you are responding to an energy outside of yourself in this way, like it's a threat. It's, it's so bizarre to me because it's almost like coming across like a six-year-old who wants to like throw a ball around with you and feeling threatened by that. Like, that's kind of how it's, that's how it's feeling, which is really bizarre. Um, there's some sort of illusion around this. I can't get away from it. There's some sort of illusion, disruption, interference, something that is just not right. It's like throwing off your, per it's like, yeah, yeah. It's like throwing off your perception of what's actually good for you. But that can happen when we're feeling fearful or when we're triggered um, or feeling like we need to survive. Because when we're in that state, we're stressed out. We're stressed out, we're, we're aroused, we're in our animal brain, right? We don't have all of our wits about us sometimes. And we are more susceptible to people projecting things onto us or convincing us of, of you know, to not even listen to our own intuition, right? So fire sign should stay in this week? Maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how this progresses. Um, some of you are not feeling safe because there is something relating to your inner child that needs to feel safe. Okay. Um, I would really focus on just getting out of an aroused state this week. That's going to be your key. Because if you're grounded and you're centered and you're calibrated, you're going to be thinking straight. You're going to be seeing things for what they are right? Being anchored within yourself. Um, there is a phrase I heard recently in terms of like allowing your energy to get compromised by other people. Burglary only happens when no one's home. So be home in yourself this week. <sighs> Tell me about hyena. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to the fox and like starfish and fish here in a minute. Um, but hyenas call my attention. Tell me about hyena. Well, that was fast. Oh, God, this feels like anxiety. <clears throat> so with hyena, we have sea serpent with the sacral chakra, peacock, <clears throat> eagle, and mouse. I just feel anxiety, 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 anxiety is all I'm feeling off of this. The mouse is definitely amplifying that. But something about this peacock eagle energy in the middle feels like pressure. Yeah, that this feels like pressure to me. Um, eagle comes out when we're trying to close out big cycles or start new cycles. The fact that the sacral chakra is here, I think also does speak to the inner child as well. And even 
it's also an emotional center where we can experience joy and creation and fun and passion, but also anger, right? And that feeling of threat. There's something pressuring fire signs into this energy. And again, this is clarifying hyena. Whatever this pressure is, is like, I just don't think is doing you any favors. It could be pressure you're putting on yourself. It could be pressure coming from the outside world. Peacock, you guys already know, I don't really ascribe to the description of this card in the deck. In the deck, it speaks to beauty and grace and a very like positive energy. But most of the time when it comes out, I just feel this like distracting, kind of superficial energy. And I, I just, I, this push and pressure for some of you is about image. For some of you, it's about, yeah, maintaining a certain status or expectation, meeting an expectation. You could be placing expectations on yourself. Other people could be placing expectations on you. And I just feel like it's making you anxious because something about it is illusionary with the hyena being there. Something about it is not what it seems. If it's your own programming, it's time to get more real about why you're having these expectations of yourself or expectations of a certain situation and why it's making you also so anxious because it's probably just not aligned with who you really are and what you really want to do. Desire is coming through with the sacral chakra as well. It's like, thank you. It feels like a push pull. It's like there's certain desires you have, but the pressure of expectation or image, whatever this pressure is, could be coming from within or without, is almost pulling you away from what it is that actually is fulfilling and, and fun for you. Interesting that fun is a part of this too. What's actually fun? Are you having enough fun? Maybe you're not having enough fun either. And it's just making you anxious. If any of you are creators, like you create, this could definitely be impacting. Oh, I just, <laughs> oh, sorry, cut me off. Um, if any of you are creators, it could definitely be impacting your finances. But I just keep getting like fire signs. I know this is like getting a little like um, enigmatic here. This is coming down to you feeling safe enough to be you and feeling safe enough to be supported materially or feeling secure enough within your home and to have fun and to create and to do what feels good and indulge in what feels right for you and feels in alignment for you. And it seems like I'm looking at fire signs who are struggling with that because there is pressure of expectation involved in this. And then on top of it, there's also this flavor of like paranoia and who can I trust and what is real and what is right for me and what's not right for me. I feel like there's a need to get very like deep within yourself to hold yourself as we already talked about, but also to recognize what this energy actually is in your life. Whether this is coming from yourself or other people, or it's a program that needs to be dismantled because something about this does not feel real. It feels like unnecessary pressure of expectation and image. Yeah, air was first. Sorry, Amelia, air was first. We're on fire right now. But air and fire definitely have something going on here. Oh my God, I just realized <laughs> I grabbed the wrong deck. <laughs> I meant to grab the rider weight and I pulled more animals, but interesting that that's how that came out. I pulled more animals. <laughs> Clearly had to be, I guess. Okay, anyway, let's actually use tarot cards here now. <laughs> Oopsie. Oopsie daisy. <sighs> Tell me about hyena. Meant to be, yeah. What's going on with hyena? I wouldn't be surprised if we get the six of cups. Coming to terms is what I just said too. Coming to terms. Five of Pentacles with this hyena energy. <sighs> this pressure of image or expectation or programming, whatever, it's definitely the like, I should be doing this versus what you actually want, <laughs> what's actually right and natural for you. 
but the five of pentacles um like say it, let me see i've watched you for many years the cough is always on stress readings <laughs> yeah my cough is interesting but anyway with the five of pentacles being here it, it's like you you're you're actually like starving yourself and we've talked about the whole starving ourselves is like becoming starved animals and the effect of that but yeah it's like this pressure it's depleting you and i feel like it's actually keeping you in a place of survival and for i'm not gonna say stagnation but like survival and i hate to say it but like desperation remember you guys had fourth house and second house resources at home <coughs> <laughs> it's putting you in this place of not feeling content not feeling safe not feeling fulfilled and feeling kind of alone too for some of you and feeling like you gotta watch out you gotta watch out you gotta watch out and i gotta protect this and i gotta look out for this and that means i gotta do this and i gotta do that instead of just listening to what you actually want it's all coming from this pressure of image and expectation or programming and also this for some of you there's also this ignoring of your inner child that's going on as well some oh thank you some of you your inner child's been telling you who is safe and who is not what is for you and what is not it's some of you it's actually your inner child's been trying to talk to you for quite some time all right let's look at fox star and starfish this definitely feels like the path that's aligned to you, that this pressure, programming, disruptive forces, other people don't want you looking at, excuse me, don't want you looking at. <clears throat> Talking about fox, starfish, and fish. Wow. If you needed any more confirmation that there is a path for you, it almost feels like sanctioned by spirit, honestly. With temperance on the four of wands, here it is. There it is. And deep down, you already know what this is for you. It literally feels like walking through into a path or a portal or a foundation or a relationship or a job situation, whatever, that is truly meant for you and has been meant for you and is soothing to your soul, by the way, very soothing to your soul, very healing for whatever this programming is and your inner child is, but you got to be willing to do it. <laughs> interesting all right let's see what other cards want to come out for my fire signs then we're going to move on <laughs> you're getting the pinch lips today fire signs four of cups what needs to be evaluated here <laughs> i think that's all i have to say to you about this what is it you have to ponder about, about the four wands and temperance? What is it you have to ponder? It's for you. It's right for you. You got to get away from these disruptive, intrusive energies, people, programming, the pressure of image, the pressure of expectation. Because you already know what the four of wands is. And even spirits like, yeah, we've been pushing you there for a while. And here you are sitting there. Still marinating on it. I think I need to marinate some more. I think I need to contemplate it some more. If you need to, you need to. And that's fine. But you already know. You already know. Anything else for my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag. Again, grounding, getting out in nature, meditating is going to be really good for you because it's going to anchor you deeper into yourself and your own truth. And it's going to make that call to the four of wands even louder and even clearer. Mm. Yeah, you've been rejecting this. You've been rejecting this. On Panther with the page of wands, we now have the three of cups. Remember what I was saying before, like this energy feels so weird because it feels like being presented, shown the four of wands, like shown what your inner child wants or even just being approached by that kind of energy that matches that. Like, like a kid coming up to have fun with you and like, you're like, no, <laughs> get away. The three of cups also confirms that too. There's, there's some, I, I feel like this is coming down to programming too. Like mostly, mostly I feel like those coming down to programming. 
whatever this four of wands is, starfish is, that gets your inner child so happy and is going to put you into a much more balanced, joyful, calmer state of being within yourself even, you've been rejecting it. You've been rejecting it. Overall, we have the Wheel of Fortune. Oh, look, beautiful. Six of Wands. Judgment. Oh my God, with the Page of Cups. More inner child energy. Once you acknowledge this and you heed the call, remember I said call, judgment's here also indicating that, it's, it's going to make things more balanced for you. It's going to make things calmer for you. You're not going to feel so stressed in survival mode. You're not going to feel so like, I need to gather this and I need to protect this. You're not going to feel so amped like that. Okay. What timestamp is the air signs? Uh, 5041. 5041. But you got to honor. You got to honor that. You got to honor the truth here. Wow. God, what's earth signs going to be like? <laughs> Y'all know how I work. If someone's going last, it's for a reason. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> earth signs. Earth signs, earth signs, earth signs. Mm. Uh. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Oh, I need a minute for this one. Ooh. Ooh, my back is freaking out on earth signs. <clears throat> you are moving into some awareness is what I feel, earth signs. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Okay, you are moving into like a certain awareness. We're gonna get deeper into what that awareness is, but... Um, some of you feel like you're about to, it's not, it's not a challenge though, but it feels like it. Okay. Whatever truth, insight, awareness, clarity, insert word here, you're moving into, oh my God, how do I, what are the words? What are the words? You're looking at it and I want to say your brain is telling you it's a challenge. It's not as hard as it seems. It's not as difficult as it seems. It's not as bad as it seems. It just feels like a profound truth. And so I feel like there's like a nervous system reaction you're having of, oh shit, <laughs> can I do that? Oh my God. Like it's, it's a little bit like that. It's a profound epiphany. I'm going to say insight. It's a profound insight and awareness you're moving into. So some of you may have a bit of a anxious reaction. Some of you may feel a cute cat in the background. Thank you. His name's Clyde, the Clydester. Um, he's a big boy. No matter how you're reacting to this, it's profound. And I think it's, a, I think it's actually a really amazing thing. Don't let it scare you right away is what I want to say. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. You're just seeing something for what it is. Thank you. Thank you for giving me better words. You're just seeing something for what it is. That's real. That's all. And when we see truth like that, sometimes it's like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, you know, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. <laughs> Hi, Cinderella290. Hello. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. God, such humbling truths coming out for everybody this week. I feel like water signs are holding it down for everybody. Earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. <sighs> ooh, ooh, everyone's reading has given me chills. Wow. You get Pluto, which is an Aquarius, with rebirth and 10th house with authority. Oh, I got chills. I got chills everywhere. Uh, wow. I just keep getting it's a profound truth and knowing you're just seeing something for what it is and you're looking at it and it's like a, oh my god <laughs> that's what it is it's a oh my god uh some of you guys are getting clarity on um what you can do that is fulfilling like mission like career that sort of thing some of you're getting clear on what you actually want to leave behind that's really nice i mean that's legacy right getting very clear on what it is you can interesting 
the difference, the difference between what you can leave behind and what you want to leave behind. Capable versus what you desire, there is a difference there. Just because you're good at something doesn't mean it's something you have to do, right? It's funny because I was going to say there's a feeling of looking at a mountain and I didn't say it, but it's coming through here in the card. This is this is a truth you've actually been wanting to have. But you're right, be careful what you wish for. Some of you have actually prayed for this level of, oh, this is a huge reading. Some of you prayed for this level of clarity and truth and now it's here and you're like, oh, sh like, it, it's like my heart is kind of sinking every time I tune into it. It has that feeling of looking up at a mountain. Like, am I really supposed to climb that mountain? But it's it's not as hard as it looks is what I'm getting at because it's something that is for you, has been for you. This definitely feels to me like mission purpose is what that feels like to me. Almost like Dharma, actually. There might be some karmic energies that you're working through, especially with Pluto being out here. You might need a moment of breath. <laughs> and that can mean like weeks of like, sitting with this but you're more than capable this yeah i can't get away from this feeling of destiny it's like it feels like you're supposed to do this you can do this do you want to do this these are the biggest questions coming up here oh big reading or signs big reading i almost want to sit in that longer but i don't think we it's necessary Some of you are gonna, some of you feel like you have to be brave. And maybe you do need a little bit more of a courageous push. But that's the other thing too that's so beautiful about whatever this truth is that's coming through because while it is a lot to take in and it feels big and profound, at the same time, you know it's for you. You know it's for you. There's a part of you that I think is even excited but mostly overwhelmed, just being honest, especially because of what it's gonna require of you, but it feels like it is for you. <sighs> yeah, I feel I need to like breathe a lot on that. All right, moving on to the animals here. I can't get away from this feeling of like legacy, career what you can contribute, what you can leave behind. These are big, big things. Some of you, this might relate to family, like starting a family or being a part of a family, chosen or not. It's gonna require you to be in like elder mode. I'm gonna say it that way. It's gonna require you to be in elder mode is what that feels like. To be the one that can be the example, to be the one that holds the responsibility but not in a way that's a burden. I want to make that very clear. I feel like that might be what's overwhelming some of you. Thank you, flashbacks. <laughs> PTSD. PTSD, flashbacks, past life stuff coming up that makes you wonder if it's going to be a burden because that's how you have felt anytime you have had to hold the responsibility. It's not, it's not going to be a burden. It's not supposed to be a burden. It's only a burden if you make it a burden. It's only a burden if you make it a burden. This is a blessing. This is a blessing. Is this collective or specific sign? Earth signs. This is a blessing. So is the Ten of Pentacles. I used to say this about the Ten of Pentacles, but I haven't said it in a bit. So here's worth reminding of the Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles is a blessing, but with the bigger the blessing, the more responsibility to maintain it and to embody it. But responsibility does not have to be burden. Responsibility does not equate to burden. In our society, we've really bastardized that word of responsibility. Responsibility is something to be welcomed. It's so, okay. So this is just a little tangent, but I'm being pulled to talk about um, Hawaii. Let's talk about Hawaii a little bit. In Hawaii, um, there's a word, kuleana, and it is to be responsible. Um, to be responsible to the land. And that is a blessing. It's not a burden, it is a gift. It is a reward to be able to be responsible and give 
and contribute and maintain the land because it's beautiful and it nurtures us, right? This is a blessing for you and it is going to give to you. It is going to nurture you, but you also have to give as much back in return, okay? So yes, a lot of you is going to go in whatever that is, but it's going to give so much back to you as well. What signs have we done? We're doing elements and we're on the last one we're on Earth. Yeah, some of you, I think, could benefit from a redefining of what responsibility is and to detach from the societal programming of responsibility. It's like we've taken that word in our society and we literally have made it like obligatory in a way of you owe. You're supposed to. You just have to. That's not what responsibility really is. Responsibility is maintaining something that gives back to you. There are a lot of times where people want so many things in their life, right? People want the successful career and people want the successful relationship and people want the epitome of health. Well, you can only have that if you're going to be willing to invest responsibly in those things, right? You can only reap rewards and harvest from what you give life to <laughs> and you cater to, you know what I mean? Anyway, that's a whole other video in and of itself. Okay, earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Do you have any animals out yet? <sighs> Moth and eagle coming out here. Moth is a is an attraction, magnetism, it's an, an inevitability. <laughs> Such a hard word for me to say, of heading towards A to B or something heading your way and then eagle. I keep getting this, Earth signs, this is for you. And you could, you could try to say no, you could try to be like, nah, I don't wanna. I feel like your soul was tailor-made for whatever you're becoming aware of. I know this is sounding, but that is how this feels to me for you. I can't get away from this feeling of, of purpose and mission. Like I can't get away from that feeling. Um, and again, it could be family related. It doesn't have to be all work, right? It's something you can leave behind. It's something you can create and be a part of. Eagle is a, the world card in this deck. It has a karmic feel to it, but again, it's opening massive cycles and closing old cycles. Moth is inevitability. I feel like this is inevitable. I feel like your awareness of what this is was also inevitable. It just had to be in the right time. It had to be in the right time. And eagle also feels very like earth, like earthy to me right now. I don't know why. I, oh, I thank you because I'm feeling the Saturn energy. I'm feeling the like the world card energy behind this. There's something that feels very like. I'm not going to say serious. It's just profound. It's just profound. Anything else for my earth signs? Oh, that's too many. Oh, but we do have otter on the bottom. I like that. Anything else for my earth signs? <laughs> there, there, I feel like there's no way you're going to not do this or not embody this or not honor this like at all, especially with starfish coming out here. Cause I mean, we just talked about starfish in the last element, right? Starfish is the star card. It's captivating. It's wish fulfillment. It's, ooh, pretty, I wanna go over there. <laughs> this lights you up. This lights you up. It might be overwhelming. It might be profound. It might be, oh my God, but it lights you up and it's inevitable and it's part of massive cycles in your life, okay? This might also coincide with the closing of a door. I just came through. Yeah, this might coincide with the closing of a door, but it's needed. It's just needed to make the space for this. All right, let's see. Anything else from my earthy kins? Anything else from my earth signs? Ooh. Remember when I said closing doors and opening doors? Oh, hi, Clydester. Uh, and Clyde's awake now. <laughs> yeah. Phoenix. Uh, this is the root chakra card or a root chakra card. And does speak to 
uh, phoenix rising moments kundalini rising moments but it is an empowerment energy and it landed on eagle this lights up your soul literally lights up your soul it revitalizes your energy it gives you new passion for some of you it's giving you a new sense of purpose i mean this is major this is major major and i keep feeling like you've been praying for this you've been wanting this you've been yearning for this and it's here and you're like oh my god <laughs> oh my god oh my god but it's worth it overall we do have raccoon what did i say you're gonna be a little like <laughs> oh look at that mountain <laughs> raccoon raccoon comes out when we want to hide it is a card of masking so sometimes it speaks to like a uh, trickstery energy but i always just feel like an overwhelmed sad i want to go hide in a corner kind of energy with this and this is your overall i just wanted to share that um but let's go ahead and pull some tarot cards for you guys some of you may feel also exposed in this clarity as well almost like you have to expose yourself or it requires you to be vulnerable um in some way shape or form some of you requires you to be seen hey water baby been with you since 2018 oh thank you jody thank you thank you thank you god what a journey right what a journey um but yeah i just was getting this feeling of vulnerability um some of you it's also interesting like a vulnerability in being assertive uh, maybe some of you feel like you're not ready to be as assertive as you need to for this. I think you are. It's just finding your sea legs with it. It's just exercising that muscle, you know? Right. You can do this. I'm getting chills. You can do this, or signs. You can do this. Tell me about moth. I just heard it is resurrected. We have magician with moth. Like I said, that this this just seems inevitable. Magician is how it sounds. It's alchemy. It's pulling things in. It's making magic. It's making things happen. But this is inevitable. I don't think you even have to try. I feel like this is, again, for you. This is for you. It has been for you, was meant to be for you. You guys know how I am. I don't say things like that unless it's like I really feel it, right? And this is also putting you in a state of really realizing what you're capable of and your own sense of empowerment but it is putting in a place of you're the one who has to take the step you're the one who has to take the step and you're going i feel like you're going to you just probably need a minute to catch your breath but you're going to oh well, i gotta adjust oh my god my leg all right tell me about eagle <laughs> take the plunge <laughs> just do it just do it and again might coincide with the closing of a door and opening of another one but it's time and this is for you and you can do it because it's for you okay the only two tarot cards out here are majors by the way both with yellow 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 we love it tell me about starfish The third major and just confirming that world card energy of the eagle, right? Some of you may be connected to avians just because we do have eagle here and eagle is also part of that. Um, but anyway, eagle is actually very Scorpio, Scorpio and actually represents Scorpio in the world card. But coming back. Yep, this is inevitable. It's for you. There's nothing more I can say. It's just like, I'm going to start beating a dead horse here. Um, it's time. This might feel like a very transformative moment because I just keep getting, it pushes you to the next level of you. You're going to have to like rise up in your own authentic energy. And I keep getting assertion as well. Respond and responsibility. No more pussyfooting around, essentially. And it's not that it's got to be all like serious and no play. Uh, wow, works, full and magician. The progression of those cards is crazy. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. This is major stuff. And that's what I was feeling with you, that this is major. Um, and it doesn't mean that you have to be all serious either. It's important to have room for play and for passion and fun and all of that. We've been learning that with this Mercury retrograde. And the full is also playful as well. 
Um, but it's time for this responsibility. And I keep getting that, like no more pussyfooting around. Some of you may have had an inkling as to what this is, but it's like in your face. The full, uh, the full truth of it is in your face. And I wanna say almost does put you in this mode of like being a little bit more diligent about ways that maybe you have been putting this off or even impeding yourself for being ready for this. But I feel like you're ready though. Let's go ahead and look at Phoenix. <laughs> Let's get another major. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, it's not. <laughs> Two of swords. So that's the pussyfoot and energy. Two of swords, moon and Libra energy, which technically in Vedic, um, this full moon is in Libra, in Vedic. So again, Vedic coming back out here. Um, but two of swords energy. I do feel some of the eclipse energy is part of this too. When do we have the full moon in Libra? That was March 25th. March 25th. There might have been something that shifted for you around the full moon Libra that you've still been kind of sitting with or maybe not feeling so great about or so confident about. It's time to blast through that two of swords energy, okay? I thank you, attachment. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's why this is also coming out. Remember, this week and this moon cycle is about is partly about detaching from programs and beliefs and things we've been holding on to, striving for, pushing for. One of these swords has been prohibiting you from seeing the full complexity and truth of what this is. And something about the full moon Libra was trying to show you but I feel like this woman Scorpio is really going to cement you really seeing it. But I, I keep hearing pussyfooting, distracting, playing on the old, looking back at the old while you're trying to look forward. It has a little bit of a seven of swords energy to it as well. Well, yeah, whatever one of those swords is, it relates to attachment and the past. Something that has no place in what this is that you're moving into. Time to get serious about that. I'm going to get serious about that. All right. Any other final cards? My earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Mm-hmm. Two of swords and the nine of cups. There it is. You want, you want more fulfillment? You want more emotional satisfaction? You want to feel more like you're living the life that is actually meant for you? You got to get real about the life that you're currently living and what and what part of you, what aspect of your life is in old attachments and restrictions and programs and addictions and old wants and old yearnings. I'm actually getting something about the child. Um, while it is in, while it is important to play and be connected to your inner child. There's something immature here and I'm just gonna call a spade a spade. So I'm not all, I'm not about tough love. You guys know that's not who I am, but I, I am gonna be very blunt and honest with you guys about certain things. I am feeling immaturity here. There is something immature in the way of thinking or in the way of living life that is impeding you from going into this level of elder, okay? That's, that's impeding you from this level of experiencing dharma. There's something immature there. They want me to really emphasize that. There's something immature that needs to be addressed and it's keeping you attached to one of the swords. Oh. There's a difference between childish and childlike. Anyway, sorry, moving on. And not sorry, but you know. You know, anything else for my earth signs? Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, yeah. Ah, uh, damn four of cups is haunting everybody. Okay. Oh, so on the world card was starfish. Just, you know, more emphasizing of what you can move into, right? Eight of swords, four of cups, and the emperor. Emperor has Pluto written all over it. As far as, uh, thank you, they said Venus, actually. So what I'm about to say might apply more to your house of Venus and the way that Venus is playing off of Pluto in that square. But anyway... Emperor, Mars energy, masculine energy, how we sit in our own authority. And one of your cards, the 10th house, has authority written on it. And that, that is elder status. It's time to embody the emperor within yourself. That is someone who is wizened. That's someone who has life experience. That's someone who doesn't pussyfoot around. That is someone who is very serious about what they do and why they do it. And why they invest their energies in the way that they do. The eight of swords and the four of cups around it, that is you ignoring your own emperor. That is you pussyfooting around. 
and getting lost in, I hate to say it, but it just keeps coming through as immature, like immature ways of thinking, immature ways of holding on to things. I know, I'm sorry guys, but that is just how it's coming through. That is what is stopping you. That is what has been creating the two of swords. Eight of swords is also fear. It's anxiety, it's illusionary thinking, it's self-limiting beliefs. Four of cups sometimes can be seen as meditating on a gift. And again, you're probably gonna need to take some time here because this truth is like, whoa, <laughs> it's whoa. But four of cups is also pussyfooting around sometimes, especially coupled with the eight of swords while you're putting the snooze on this aspect of you that needs to come out and forward. And I can't just heard responsibility. So you guys are afraid of responsibility, but that's the immaturity talking. That's the immaturity talking. If you're afraid of responsibility, that is the immaturity talking. Okay. Overall, we have the sun and the chariot. Who sits in the chariot? The emperor. You'll take this on when you're ready. You'll move forward into this when you're ready to embrace the emperor. So, okay, we got a whole new realm here. Um, some of you really need to work on your own relationship with masculine energy because that is part of what's going to move you into this. Some of you that actually translates to your relationship with men, your viewpoints on men, your viewpoints on masculinity, and if there's any distortion or toxicity there. Sorry, just got to call a spade a spade. Okay, I feel all worked up now and <laughs> getting to the end of her signs reading. Um, yeah, that's very interesting. Okay, all right, we are complete. <laughs> we are done. Let me check what time it is. Oh my God, it's already two? Oh my gosh. Oh, not enough time in the world. Um, I gotta get Clydester ready for his vet visit soon, but I'm also gonna try to do some shorts for the full moon Scorpio um, and keep in mind after this post, after we hang up with each other, whatever, um, the full moon Scorpio live will be available on Vimeo. It's already available on Patreon, okay? Um, but yeah, so we are complete for the week. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope that this has been helpful and insightful for you. This is a very, this is a week, a week of perspective on everything um, and what sanctuary really is for all of us and prioritizing what and who we value and just honoring that okay all right guys i'm gonna go i love you thank you guys for coming out sorry i got a little intense towards the end uh but i hope you have an amazing day an amazing week and i'll see you guys very soon okay namaste